Hello again and welcome back. Today you'll find out how not to lose your precious photos and why an ass is the answer to that. Stick around to find out more. And no, an external hard drive is not a proper backup solution. Hard drives, even SSDs, will eventually fail. And you will lose your photos. You can, however, copy your photos on two or more hard drives manually, but that's not a very good long-term solution. So you probably have a lot of photos by now given that smartphone cameras became better and better in the past years. And if you're like me, you've probably outgrown the cheapest cloud solutions plans that companies like Google or Amazon provide. But let's go back a few years when this all started so you understand my sudden interest in this topic. I've started to be into photography at an early age, when I was about 8 or 10 years old. Back then I was using a rangefinder type camera with film. Fast forward to my high school years, pocket photo cameras started to be a thing. And basically that was the starting point of my ever-growing photo library. By the time I finished college, my photo library already surpassed 2 terabytes in size. A key point happened in 2017 when Amazon came with a proposition. Unlimited cloud storage for only 60 bucks a year. I immediately jumped in. Just before that I bought 20 Blu-ray discs, double-sided, each capable of holding about 50 gigabytes of data. In total that was about 1 terabyte of data. Not a bad idea for a cold storage solution. But let's go back to Amazon. All was good in the first year, but after that they changed the terms and conditions. And those 60 bucks a year could only get you 1 terabyte of storage. It was still a good price compared to the competition. But I've soon outgrown that 1 terabyte of data and had to upgrade to the next plan, 2 terabytes, for about 120 bucks a year. One key point here, Amazon has an automatic backup feature which automatically can back up your camera roll. But I found that to be a bit unreliable. I was not really sure which photos are backed up and which are not. So I turned it off relying on doing it manually. Now it gets a bit interesting. I was in a vacation with my girlfriend in Algarve, the south of Portugal. By the way, it's an amazing place and I can recommend you to visit it. That was the vacation in which I proposed and she accepted. And almost all the photos were taken using my Pixel 3 phone from work. I had my own smartphone of course, but the Pixel 3 was way better in taking photos. Not long after the trip, I made one of the biggest changes in my life. I moved to another country. That meant of course, I had to quit my job and yes, give back the phone. I think you know where I'm going here. Yes, I gave up my phone and I wiped it, forgetting that I turned off the automatic backup. And ended up losing almost all my photos. I say almost because we managed to send some photos to friends and family and those are the only photos that we have from that vacation. Since then I swore that this will never happen again. All was good, I still had my 2TB plan at Amazon, but I also had a lot of hard drives laying around with older photos that could not fit that space in the cloud. Nowadays phones can record 4K and even 8K. Some of them can even shot raw. Most of the time after your trips, you won't take your time to go through the photos, edit them and maybe delete the ones that are not that good. That's exactly my case and that's how my library surpassed the 2TB plan from Amazon and I needed a change. Regarding cloud storage, I can argue that 2 terabytes is a threshold up until things are reasonably priced. After that, prices skyrocket. Because of that and because Amazon was ending their cloud storage, transforming it into something like a photo and video storage only, I was in the market for a new cloud storage that would fit my needs. And quite fast I stumbled upon iDrive and Backplace. But soon enough I found out that those two are mostly centered at offering cloud backup rather than cloud storage. That means that you should already have a local storage that you back up to the cloud. iDrive conveniently enough released a cloud storage solution alongside with their cloud backup. 10 terabytes of cloud storage plus 10 terabytes of cloud backup for only $99 a year. And most of the time you could find deals like $3 in the first year. That sounded too good to be true. I immediately jumped in and started migrating all my photos from Amazon. But as you may think, things were not looking too good. Their web interface was quite nice. You can just drag and drop files and they will be automatically uploaded to the cloud. And they also provide uh, desktop apps for both Mac and Windows. And also for smartphones, Android and iOS. But the big issue was reliability. Every single time I tried to upload a bunch of files, I ended up with some of them not being uploaded. Every time. I spent weeks talking to their support team, they were asking for logs, they showed me how to test some stuff, but in the end nothing really worked. 
So back to the present. Well, a couple of months ago, I decided it's time to buy a NAS. So what's a NAS? In the IT world, we like acronyms, and NAS is just one of them. It stands for Network Attached Storage. In simple terms, it's just a hard drive which can connect to your local storage using an Ethernet cable. Well, it's a bit more complex than that. To be honest, it's more like a full-fledged PC which can fit anywhere from 2 to 24 hard drives. My current NAS, a Synology, not sponsored by the way, has an AMD processor and 8 gigs of RAM. It has a 1 gigabit per second network card, 2 slots for NVMe drives and an expansion slot for a 10 gigabit network card. Oh yeah, and has 5 hard drive bays, so you can fit in 5 hard drives. Currently, it's fitted with two Seagate Exos enterprise-level hard drives, each 16 GB of storage. They are set up in something called a RAID array. Actually, I used the Seagate's uh, proprietary SHR for this, but it's similar. That means out of the 32 GB of storage, only half is usable, but that in turn gives me redundancy, meaning that if one drive fails, I'm not losing any data. Keep in mind that this is not considered a backup. Redundancy is not backup. In case something goes wrong with the NAS itself, or you have a power outage, or a flood, or a fire, whatever, the data will be gone. For backup, I use an external hard drive, this lazy 2D professional. And it also uses a Seagate hard drive inside. I use Seagate because of the 5 year warranty and data recovery included in the price. So my setup works like this. I upload my photos through the network to the NAS. And once in a while, I plug my external hard drive into the NAS and use a software called USB copy to mirror the contents of the NAS onto the external storage. Each time I run it, it only copies the differences between the folder on the NAS and the folder on the external hard drive. That means things go really fast. If I change something, if I delete something on the NAS, it deletes it from the external storage and if I add something new, it gets copied to the external storage. So in case something happens to the NAS, like it fails for some reason and both hard drives die, I still have my cold storage to recover everything. And that's a real backup. All good, but what if I'm in vacation and I want to backup my camera roll from abroad or from a different place rather than my home? How do I fix this? Well, you can connect to the NAS from anywhere in the world and you can back up your camera roll on the go. You can think of it like your personal cloud storage. That way, if you have to give back your work phone, you won't lose your photos after you wipe it. Another cool thing you can use your NAS for is as your media server. You can install Plex on it and stream your content directly on the TV. Hmm, that gets me thinking. Maybe I should rethink about my streaming subscriptions. Now, let's get to the costs. The entire setup ended up uh, costing me about uh, $1300. That's the NAS, the two hard drives and the external lazy hard drive. To put it in perspective, Amazon's 10 terabytes plan costs about $600 per year and the 20 terabytes plan costs double. But let's say for uh, another $250, I can expand my storage with up to 16 terabytes. I have to say that the NAS plus the external storage solution is not a bad deal and I don't have to worry about terms and conditions changing in the future. If this was helpful for you, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. See you again and don't forget, stay curious.